Shane Vangersbergen from VIP Pet Foods Racing. You're watching Motors TV. Yeah, my name's Scott McLaughlin, I race for Fujitsu Racing GRM. Uh, we're here this weekend, uh, the V8 Supercar Australian Championships here this weekend at Circuit of the Americas in uh, Austin, Texas. So, first time in the USA and I've probably come to one of the best tracks in the world, so really looking forward to getting out there. I'm Shane Vangersbergen, I race the 97 VIP Pet Foods Holden Commodore in the Supercar Series. Oh, we're for the first time racing in America. I've never been here before, so it's a pretty awesome track. Normally, all the F1 tracks we go to are quite boring and, and basic, and here there's a lot to it, and it's very challenging and quite fun in a supercar, so really enjoying it. Top of the hill and found it too. So Winkup manages to take the lead down. Yeah, my season so far, 2013, it's been up and down. Um, I've had my first win. Um, I had that in my home uh, country New Zealand which was an amazing feeling and um, just really uh, you know we've had we've had some good car pace at places but haven't in some places so we've just got to get that consistency consistency a little bit better and we'll be right but uh, we're 10th in the championship my rookie season I couldn't be much happier at the moment yeah so this year the supercars went to a new style of chassis an independent rear end where it's normally a solid axle and it's been pretty good, good year for us. We started with a win and uh, we've been constantly moving up in the points, so fifth now. It's been a pretty good year. There's, the new cars are quite exciting, awesome racing and lots of passing and contact. It's been really cool and I think the, the new style of car has, has made it like that. So it's been great so far and racing in America, we raced in my home country, New Zealand as well. So it's been a good year. Yeah, well, my car is a, is a Holden VF Commodore. Uh, they came out this year. Um, obviously, it's, uh, it's, it, there's four manufacturers now in the championship, Holden, Ford, Mercedes, and uh, Nissan. So, um, yeah, to be a part of the Holden family is a big thing because it's so prestigious around uh, in Australia. But obviously, it's a six-speed sequential box, um, V8 engine, 650-odd horsepower, and, uh, you know, it likes to do a lot of, a lot of skids, so I've just got to try and tame all that power and try and drive, drive a quick lap. Hey guys, uh, welcome to my garage at uh, Fujitsu Racing GRM here at the beautiful Circuit of the Americas. Uh, really, I just want to show you my car and, and give you guys a good understanding of what it's all about. So, uh, yeah, come through. Um, basically, biggest thing, obviously, the first thing everyone talks about is the engine. It's a, it's a five litre uh, V8. Uh, 650 horsepower, um, yeah, produces a, a, a ton of power. Um, probably is not as, not as much torque um, as, as some engines, but definitely the power and the top end speed is massive. Um, the biggest thing this year compared to our last year cars, um, we've gone to the 18 inch tire. Um, so that means bigger brakes, bigger tires, um, more grip overall, and the cars are actually faster. So the brakes now uh, is a control package. Everyone's got the same um, package. Uh, improves racing, um, helps helps passing sort of thing. So, yeah, really enjoying it. The new brake package is suiting me. You can you can brake quite late, and uh, it's good fun. So, uh, basically, we've just come in from a session as well. So we've got our, our cooler just cooling our brakes. The brake ducts go through, and. Uh, pumps cool air through and uh, basically, obviously in all motorsports, it's, it's a very important to keep your brakes cool, um, especially when they're stationary and uh, yeah. Another, another new feature to uh, my, my new car is my fuel cell has been moved, um, moved further forward. It used to be in the rear of the car quite close um, and, and what was the most dangerous part of that was if you stalled on the grid, it was very easy for someone to run, run at your back and, uh, and cause a massive fireball, which happened a couple of years ago. So. They've moved that forward, um, and that's basically, it's a ticking time bomb behind my, uh, behind my seat, but it's made it a lot safer um, in case we do have a big, big hit. That's Kelly in front. He gets another whack in the rear. Basically all made out of composite to make it as light as possible. Uh, these little things here, I've got them on uh, 
my, my left side and my right side. They basically capture air and helps me keep as cool as possible because inside these cars, it's, you know, it can be 60 degrees. Like today, it's a, it's a you know, a 30, 30 degree day. It could be, you know, 50 degrees in the cockpit. So it's very hard. So as much air in the cabin is good. So come have a look inside my car and I'll show you what's going on. Remember in the previous race that Coulthard managed to hold off Wing Cup and claim. Yeah, welcome to my, uh, my office, you could say. Um, basically, to keep me the coolest is uh, I've got a cool box. Um, basically, that holds dry ice, up to 10 litres of dry ice. Um, and, and that connects to my drink bottle, keeps my drink bottle cool um, and, and filters all the way to my helmet. So I get, I get cool air through my helmet. I get a cool suit, which pumps through all my torso um, and just, you know, brings your core body temperature down um, instead of sweating out of the cabin, especially with the fire suit and everything on, um, it's, it's, it's very hot. So, um, obviously my gear stick, um, six, six gears, um, it's, it's sequential box, um, pull to go up, push to go down, and I've got a reverse paddle here. So if I want to get into first, I go to neutral, pull that paddle and push it forward and that's reverse. It's quite hard to get into, but uh, basically all my control panel for my car, electronics, um, even my camera connected to my car, everything's mounted down there. A lot of it's because of weight, so we want to try, obviously I'm, I'm quite heavy, we want to try and keep as much weight on that side of the car and also space as well. Uh, my anti-roll bar levers, these are my main tuning tools um, when, I, when I'm in my car. Um, uh, if I, uh, this is my rear one, that's my front one. Basically, if I'm losing rear grip, I soften my rear bar and I, that spins around like that and uh, that, that basically uh, turns, turns a bar at the rear of my car and either stiffens or softens the chassis. So obviously softens, helps the, my rear grip and harden in the rear, stiffen the rear, makes my turn a little bit better. So um, yeah, basically to my main part, basically what I look at, um, I've got a dash up here, a Motec dash that we run. Um, Basically, my shift lights are up here. I've got my pit lane speed limiter. Um, these, these three buttons here, they control my, my screen, so I, I get lap times, predicted lap, um, gear position, everything that I need um, to get the car off the line, get it in a pit stop, get it through a race. My drink bottle, um, obviously I've got that as well to keep me cool. Uh, headlights, just for flashing lights, so if we're in a, uh, a very confined space and, and, and we're trying to put a lap in, we want to get the guys out of the way so we can get our lap done, so we flash them. My starter button and my radio, probably the most important one to communicate with the crew. So, um, And on the back of my steering wheel, I've got my line locker, which holds my car in place. Uh, when I, when I, at the start, when I bring the clutch up, I've, I've got the brake on as well, which holds the car in place. So when I pull the clutch off and disengage the clutch, it, um, it's, it's right there, like I'm straight away. So um, basically, you've got all your ignition, um, headlights, indicators, um, and, and all my tuning to turn this on, and um, a few other things. So yeah, obviously it's a it's it's um, a pretty confined spot. It gets quite hot, but um, you know I wouldn't want to have an office anywhere else. So it's pretty cool. It's a Sunday afternoon here in Texas. Temperature reaching boiling point. Jamie Winkup starts from pole position after collecting two out of two poles for the day. He had Fabian Coulthard next to him. I started pretty different to most people in, in the supercars. I started on quad bikes when I was eight and raced them right until I got into V8s. But I only did a year of karting. I was always too big for it. And then I just did the single seaters. So I did Formula V, Formula Ford, and then uh, Formula Toyota single seaters and then um, so yeah only only three years and then switched to the V8 so I think 2008 I started so been here a while now. Um, well I, it all started my mum and dad used to race go-karts um, back before I was born so I guess I might have had it in my blood. Um, started when I was six years old uh, raced in New Zealand and Australia uh, till I was 16, go-karts. Um, and my dad didn't really like the, the whole um, jumping to former Ford, which is a little bit of a, he didn't like the, how dangerous it was, the open wheeler thing. So um, 
well, there was an opportunity there to um, put me into a V8 supercar and uh, we gave it a bit of sponsorship and and, and actually with the people that I'm with now, Fujitsu Air Condition, uh, they, they bowed me up and I jumped, I jumped into the young 16 year old and had my first V8 supercar race in the Dunlop series. So um, it was a massive thing. Um, raced that for three years. We had a three year plan of um, we, we, that we wanted to do. Um, hopefully in the last year that we were in, um, we, we get a signed contract for the next year in the, in the Viet Supercar main game and also that last year win the championship and that's what we did and I signed a deal with Gary um, this past year and I'm um, having a little back, back since, you know, having the time of my life. I'm over in America racing a Viet Supercar, mate, 19 years old. I, you know, I can't have a beer over here but I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> Well, I think it, uh, the car is, for the US people, it, it, it's like a NASCAR, but it's more, it's more sports car side. It's, it's, a, it's a big, heavy, heavy race car, which, um, with a lot of weight towards the rear axle. Um, but, um, you know, you, you've still got that NASCAR feel. You can bang doors and stuff like that, but you've got the sports car feel where you can um, go real fast and use the tyre as much as you can. So, um, for Europeans, it's, it's much like a DTM, just without all the, um, the downforce that they have um, with their wings and stuff. But um, yeah, it's, 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 a, a, it's an impressive category from Australia. They've had it for about 12 years now and the cars are really developed over that time. And um, you know, I think it really can take, take on the likes of NASCAR. It's gonna take a while, but it's, it's, it's a category that still is in its growing phase and looking forward to seeing and growing with it. For my driving style, I just go as hard as I can and, and uh, push push to the max and unfortunately that sometimes wears out the tyres so you've got to change it for the races but in qualifying it's normally uh, all out and that's what I just strive on is just having a car that can handle that and handles right and just driving flat out is, is what I love and uh, yeah, here at Circuit of the Americas you can do that. There's lots of big curbs and, and fast corners so you can really get the most out of it. The races, I've always grown up with a bunch of mates and, and we've always been drifting and stuff like that so been uh, in the professional drift series in New Zealand so getting better at it but um, yeah I just love going nuts after the races and playing up and everyone seems to enjoy it as well so it's pretty cool to see everyone cheering at the smoke and everyone loves skids. <laughs> IRS approached us, uh, I think it was late last year, about doing, um, they were updating the new tyre model on the V8 Supercar. Um, obviously, these things take time and they needed test drivers and, and what better way for IRS to use me and Shane. We know what the cars feel like and um, it, it, was, it was an enjoyable experience. We actually got to work with um, a chief engineer from iRacing. We got to learn all about the physics and stuff. We'd tell him exactly what's going on and, and uh, it changed it and instantly you'd feel a change and I think uh, when you've you got guys dedicated like that, working 24-7, working on time, it all just shows how, how good uh, iRacing is. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to seeing what, working more with iRacing and seeing what we can do with it and how actually realistic we can make it because obviously uh, the more realistic we can make it, uh, the more, more help it's going to be for us. So that's, it's, it's a very passionate thing for me and Shane to do. On our racing, I mainly play the, the oval stuff and, and race that, and it's really cool. There's lots of um, pro guys on that too to race against, but um, doing, doing a lot of work on the, the V8 supercar as well and continuing to make it better. But it's really cool to be able to race that at Phillip Island, and you know, all the brake points and gear changes are the same, and, and the times are, are really close as well. So we'll continue to make that better, and when Bathurst comes out soon, that'll be awesome as well. Well, our racing has been a big thing for me, especially with my growing towards um, being a vet to become a professional driver. Um, you know, you've got all the setup tools, um, you, got, you can learn the tracks. Um, like I said, the setup tools you can actually learn. I've learnt probably half of my knowledge about uh, changing springs, um, rebound, all that sort of stuff. You, you learn that on RIC and you learn what, what it feels like when it changes and I think um, it's the best way to sort of fast forward your tracking. Um, Oh, you can also have fun, like uh, me, and, me and Shane Van Gisberg and another fellow driver, and, and there's also Mark Winterbottom on there as well, but uh, we have a good, good, good time. We mix it with uh, some of the fans and um, have a race every Monday night, Australian time, and um, yeah, we really enjoy it. And it's, uh, we don't just stay in the Viet Supercar, we've got the Mazda MX-5, and we have a bit of fun there, and um, even the NASCAR, so 
getting on and racing with the mates. Uh, there's Scotty McLaughlin, Fabian, and quite a few Kiwi mates we, we race against. So it's always cool to jump on at night and race them. And Scotty's pretty wild. He, he takes everyone out all the time, and, and, he, and he comes on the radio. Sorry, mate. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we raced in Perth, and we come around a corner, and he just smacked me in the rear and hit me off the track. And I just laughed, and I could imagine him coming on the radio saying sorry, but um, yeah, he's a bit of an idiot, but we have good races and um, he's a pretty talented kid too. I, I race Shane quite a bit on our race and he races like a lot like he does in real life. There's a lot of contact, you get a lot of those zero X's coming up on your screen and four X's, but um, you can see why his SR's down quite a bit because it's not too good, but uh, yeah, he's, a good, he's good to race against, but hey man, we, we're competitive. Even on our racing, like we, we uh, go real hard and, 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 and bang, bang doors and uh, we have fun um, but obviously we want to try and make it as realistic as possible and he's a, he's a hard racer so um, I try and give it back to him as much as I can but he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's definitely one that I want to beat all the time. <laughs> the Monday night races we do on the V8 Supercar series on our racing, it's, um, it's basically uh, a lot of the, a lot of them are Australians. I'm actually in the team, and I actually compete with some some of my fans. Um, and there's a few guys, Justin Ruggier, who used to race, and he's um, he's a he's a good teammate of mine. He always helps me with setups because I'm always away doing this. He sets the car up for me, helps me with the setup, and away I go. But uh, there's a few other guys, Madison Down. Um, he's from Sydney, Australia. I think he's he's six-time Australian V8 Supercar champion. So I'm sure he would uh, go pretty good if he got a chance in a real car. But um, yeah, sometimes I race NASCAR as well, and um, you, you race guys from Arizona, and, and I think they call it the Midwest and stuff like that, and uh, you, you don't know where they are, but uh, some of them are bloody good, and, and you have to try and learn stuff off them, so it's, uh, it's an awesome thing, and, and, and it just shows how far technology's come to put together people to come from Finland, New Zealand, Australia, uh, USA. It's unbelievable, so it's, uh, it's a credit to iRacing and uh, the incident itself. Um, but I'd love to race against you know NASCAR champion Brad Keselowski or uh, even uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's he's a popular one as well. So I um, yeah it'd be amazing. And I hear the iRacing and Pro Race the champions coming up. So I might hopefully try and get a ticket for that and um, have and rub some panels with these guys. But um, yeah, respect them highly. Obviously, following Marcus Ambrose, I actually raced for Marcus Ambrose's team um, in the V8 Supercar Development Series and. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've sort of got a bit of a soft spot there. I want to race Marcus as well, so, um, yeah. Yeah, the Pro Racer Champions, I did a bit of practice with Richie Stanaway. We both ran quite good, but uh, in the Oval Race, I had an awesome run with uh, Kyle Larson, and he came out and raced in New Zealand where I was over summer, and, you know, I was a big fan of him, so it was actually pretty cool to race against them, and I think in practice I spun out Kozlowski as well, so that was pretty fun, but, uh, you know, to win that was very cool. There's some top guys in that, and, you know, this year I might have a target on my back, so hopefully we can keep the title. Basically the race format this weekend at, at Texas is uh, four races. Uh, we've got four practice sessions today on the Friday, uh, each 30 minutes, and then uh, we've got a qualifying uh, each day. So Saturday we have uh, a qualifying for two races, so there's two 15 minute sessions, and then we've got two races in the afternoon. I think they're 20 odd. So, um, in each race we've got a, we've got a um, pit, so basically this is our pit box. It's a little bit more uh, less technical say to a Formula 1 pit or, or maybe even NASCAR but um, basically you got your air guns, everything that goes, so, so we've got the pit boom so it can go across the other side of the car so they can change the other side of the other side tyres. Um, the, I don't know if you can see but the markings on the on the road there, the little red tape, is that's where I, basically where the, the, the wheel changes stand um, and I've got to try and stop as close as I can to those marks to make it a good pit stop. So not only the boys have got to do a good pit stop, I've got to come in and, and, and stop on the marks and do my job as well. So it's not just turn the pit speed limiter on and let the boys do it, I've got to, I've got to keep my job up. So massive concentration here, it's quite dangerous as well but um, you know, I, this is probably some part I actually enjoy. I enjoy pit stop races and I think it brings a little bit more strategy into the race and I think for you fans it's a lot better, so enjoy.
basically this is where my uh, my pit crew, my my engineer stand. Um, they go through uh, everything uh, that's going on in the car, so they basically are riding with me, um, but via uh, all the technology and telemetry, you got lines and stuff that I don't understand, but I'm happy to drive the car. So um, basically up here, they've got all uh, wheel speed sensors, battery voltage, everything that really um, helps me, they give me information in the car, that could be brake temps, um, anything like that, just to help me um, know exactly that I've got the car to the opt optimum temperature, um, that I'm, I'm taking the right line even, they can, they can judge all that. This is a predictive lap of the track, um, so basically it's got, it, it will show on there, basically that lap stays there and then it's got a live lap of me braking so it'll see if I'm braking at the same points or if I'm getting on the power at the same points. So basically they say, hey, you're slower in sector one but you, uh, you're faster in sector two. So you sort of take that into account and you work that around and hopefully get the optimal lap time. Um, basically, yeah, the, all, the, all the lap times down here are different sort of colours. It's pretty good that we're filming now because I'm at the top of the time sheets for the last session. So uh, the red sectors mean the best sector. Um, uh, blue means personal, personal best um, and a few things. So you've got speed on there. And basically they use that also for um, knowing where every other car is on the track. So if we need a pit, um, you know, we know where we're going to slot into when we come out of the pits and, and it's more of a strategic sort of thing. So, but these races um, this weekend, uh, we're not taking on any fuel. It's just two tyres, so it's going to be quick pit stops. Um, traditionally, uh, we've got long races and short races. The Clipsal 500 in Adelaide Bathurst, which is a massive event, you've probably heard about, they're long races. They, they require fuel pit stops as well. So normally we have um, fuel pit boom sort of out that hold 120 litres to fill the tank right up and that normally takes about 10 seconds so unfortunately you guys don't get to see that this, this weekend but um, I think the, the races over in Australia are just as good as they're going to be here but I think having the two tyre format here this weekend is going to be add a lot of spice to the racing and uh, yeah, really looking forward to trying to use the uh, two new tyres that I get on my backside uh, to my advantage so yeah. A lot of drivers down up and down pit lane that haven't got iRacing already, but we'll get iRacing just for Bathurst. The reason being, it's a public road, you can't get on there. It's basically we race here once a year, and uh, there's no test days. You basically get there on the Thursday and race the Sunday, and that's all you get. So Bathurst is so hard because it's not like any other track. There's so many elevation changes and a lot to it. So being able to do laps on the sim in a supercar before we go will be uh, be so valuable. So I've probably done 60 laps in my whole time where. Someone like Craig Lowndes, who's driven for the last 20 years at Bathurst, has done probably 2,000 odd laps. So um, it's, a, it's, it's awesome for the younger generation. Um, we might have it over the older guys because they won't know how to use the computer. So we might be able to turn a few more laps and um, hopefully you know, pick up a few tenths in here and there. And after looking at Phillip Island, I've raced around there uh, millions of times. And uh, looking at how, how accurate that is, it's, it just shows how good Bathurst is going to be and really looking forward to uh, seeing the finished product, product. but uh, lucky I might be able to get a few laps in before that happens. Pretty cool, the best thing about Phillip Island, you can go there, do laps on the, on the sim before you get there and you know, first lap out you're right on it. So with Bathurst coming out soon, we'll be able to get there before the race and uh, cut some laps so as soon as we're on it we can go, but um, you know, enjoying racing here and the series in New Zealand and uh, doing a lot of drifting stuff too, which is great fun and good for the car control as well. So plenty of racing, there's not much time for, for other stuff outside of racing, it's what I live for.